Oh, sorry, night, t night after. Okay. So, in this opening, we are trying to control E4. So, controlling E4. And white should be trying to get a pawn on e4 and supporting it with pieces. Um, and black, meanwhile, needs to control e4 and break in the center when necessary. And sometimes you play this as well. And sometimes just this, but most often c5. So, uh, so there's a whole bunch of possible moves here after b6, including knight c3, bishop g5, bishop f4, g3, which is most popular, a3, and what was played here, which is e3, quiet. Bishop b7, bishop d3. And now black plays bishop b4 check. So now you get a get to castle with tempo and reinforces this control of this square because if this knight moves it'll be pinned so this bishop will be already pinning the knight if it chooses to go here or here um, so if, he, if white plays knight c3 transposes into a nimzo indian if uh, bishop d2 it's fine, but you really can't do anything about it because after bishop takes, queen takes, d6, knight c3, knight b7, queen c2, castle, castle, rookie d1, queen e oh, sorry, wait, what? Oh, yeah, queen e7, knight g5. H6, knight, ge4, c5. And black is fine here. And, of course, if e4 here, then the thematic response e5. And then if d5, then a5, securing this outpost so that you can't play b4. So this is all normal stuff, but... Um, but this is harmless for, for black. So knight bd2. And now what should black play here? Okay, so castling is okay, but it lends itself to this bishop being misplaced. So, after castle, castle, um, it's a normal position, but this bishop usually belongs on the square, e7. And if black tries to take advantage of this with knight e4, he actually gets in some trouble, because castle, f5, Queen c2, take, knight takes, queen h4, f3, knight d2, bishop d2, castle, and now good move b4, 
White has more space, two bishops, and center control. So black is worse here. So knight e4 is a little too, a little too aggressive, and really no st strategy behind it. So the consistent move with bishop e4 is to play c5. So you're immediately breaking up at the center. So what do you guys think is best for white here after c5? So, I think the best move here is actually a3. So a3, bishop takes, bishop takes, and there's really no way for black to punish white for playing a3. Like, for example, if knight e4... Bishop takes, bishop takes, and bishop c3 is strong. Because now you have to play f6 to defend this pawn. Like if you castle, for example, take, take, queen d6 is crushing. Because now this this whole stuff is, is stymied. So you have to play f6. And then knight d2, good move. Bishop g6. dc, bc h4, h5, queen f3, attacking the rook, knight c6, knight e4, queen e7, rook d1, castles, and knight d6. And white has a good initiative here. So instead of playing knight e4 on move 8, he has to play d6 here, which is more conservative. But then bishop c3, knight bd7, Castle, castle, and white has the two bishops. It's a bit more space, so white's slightly better here. Yeah, I mean, bishop a5 amounts to a waste of time, because you're eventually going to have to take this anyway. I can just castle. Now I'm threatening knight b3. So you're going to have to take this anyway. So you waste a full tempo. So you don't want to play bishop a5. Queen d4? How would I play queen d4? Um, so yeah, I think a3 is actually best. Gaining the two bishops. But white took here. So what should black do? Yep, this is different. And also there's no pawn on b6, so the bishop can come back this way too. So okay, what, what after dc?
So yeah, you can't actually take with a pawn here. Because for the same reason. After castle. And then knight b3. I'm threatening a3 to, to kind of trap the bishop. So this bishop is actually not in a good position. But if this bishop were on e7 instead. If this bishop were back here. Then you could take with a pawn. And it's, it's a normal move. But when the bishop's kind of already developed here, you, you can't take with the pawn, you have to take with the bishop. So bishop takes. So what's going on in this position? Sure you did a trick banned. Alright, so what's going on here? Well, okay, who whose pieces are better? Whose pieces are better? Whites or blacks? Yep. Okay, well who's Who's uh who has more space? Who has more space, white or black? No, they're not equal. Yep. So white has more space because of this pawn. Black has no pawns past the third rank, right? No pawns past this, whereas white has this pawn. So white has more space. Okay, where is this queen bishop going? What square? No, you fools, it's going to g5. Yeah, you guys are right. It's going to b2. Okay, that was an easy one. That was an easy one. Okay, so with all that in mind, what should white have in consideration here? Is it better to play b3? Good question. The answer is it depends. Sometimes you do one, sometimes you do the other. So yeah, it depends. But good question. Because actually both are very playable, depending. So. Okay, so give, given all this, what, what should White be doing here? So, so who who's playing on what side? Who who's playing on the king side, white or black? Who's playing on the king side, white or black? <laughs> and Fank, you're like the worst ever at these at these questions. So, you guys aren't really understanding what's what's happening, because the only, the clear answer is that black is playing on the king side. These two bishops are aimed at the king side. So white actually has to nullify black's attacking chances on the king side, because white's going to play on the queen side, obviously, a3 and either b4 or b3. But he's going to be gaining space on the queen side, because that's where his pawn advantage lies, 